Male hummingbirds perform fantastic courtship dives for females. Each species makes a different sound. Here are some examples. Most of the sounds I just played were made by the tail, and each species sounds different. They make the sound by spreading the tail one or more times when they dive. Each species has modified tail feathers, such as the inner tail feathers indicated here. I studied how the feathers make sound. In particular, I wanted to know how different shapes produce the sounds that the different species make, and whether feathers could interact with each other. This is a feather producing sound in wind tunnel. Air flows from the left to the right. Rotating the feather makes it stop producing sound and then start again. The trailing edge of the feather flutters to produce the sound, as this high-speed video shows. Here is an animation of the vibration of that feather. This is the fundamental frequency, which is about 1 kHz. And here is the second harmonic, which was about 2 kHz. Here is a feather with a different shape. Like before, rotating it activates or deactivates the mode of flutter. This high-speed video shows how it flutters. The feather's shape determines the way that it flutters, which determines what it sounds like. Orientation sometimes matters. This is the coolest feather I have tested so far, one of the tiny tail feathers of the white-bellied woodstar. Listen to how the pitch changes when I rotate the feather. This is their dive sound. In addition to shape, we tested whether feathers could interact. After all, all feathers have close neighbors. So, I tested the two outer tail feathers from the Anna's hummingbird. Feathers can amplify each other. When I rotate the larger feather away, the sound gets quieter. Here is a high-speed video of just the outer tail feather by itself. And here are the feathers together. This amplification effect is why the Anna's hummingbird's chirp is so loud. This is Chris Clark showing how hummingbirds sing with their tail feathers.